Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting game from round 5 of this year's FIDE Candidates Tournament. It is uh, Gukesh who is in close pursuit of Nepo who is leading the tournament uh, against Nijat Abbas of both of them. Uh, this is their first time in the Candidates Tournament and both of them of course want to do really well. Uh, but uh, as I've said in the previous video and in the one before that, uh, Nijat is definitely the underdog here. He is um, the one who will have to struggle to... Uh, take a full point in, in any of the games as he is much much lower rated than uh, well everyone else here uh, but that's what, what what he's for it's a great opportunity for him whatever he does it's excellent uh, so yeah let's see let's see what he does here uh, Gukesh uh, has the white pieces and he opens with e4 and we can even uh, show a nice uh, photo of this matchup sorry that's from the previous video uh, let me just uh, let me just load that up that was, uh, th there we go. Uh, Gukesh on the left, Nijat on the right there. Uh, you can see both the uh, India and the Azerbaijan flag. Uh, as usual, if you see anything weird in the photos, uh, be sure to report it in the, uh, in the comment section so everyone else can uh, marvel at it as well. Uh, now let's check it out. E4, we have pawn to E5, knight to F3, knight to F6, and now pawn to D4. Striking against the pattern of defense with this early strike in the center. Uh, knight captures on E4 and bishop to D3, attacking the knight. We have pawn to D5, and now just D captures on E5. And this is already the first big surprise of the game, as uh, this is not uh, what, what you usually see here. A knight captures on E5 is pretty much an automatic. D captures on E5 uh, has never been played in a... A uh, top tier game between uh, strong grandmasters. Uh, knight to c okay, it has been played between strong masters, but not between elite grandmasters. We have knight to c5 going after the bishop, bishop back to e2, Gukesh preserving the bishop pair, bishop to e7, and both players castle. So castles, castles, and now rook to e1. And there are a couple of games that reach this position. Bishop to g4 is a non move, knight to e6 is a non move, but here we have pawn to c6, and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so, okay, knight to b to d2 and knight b to d7. This knight b to d7, uh, first real think of the game. So far, n n uh, both players played pretty much instantly. Nijat wasn't very impressed by this d captures an e5 idea and he replied instantly. And uh, this is the first uh, real think of the game, some 10 minutes for this move. We have pawn to h3, a5, and now pawn to f6, striking against uh, this uh, strong center, but not right away. Uh, first, of course, knight to b3, going after the uh, uh, the knight on c5, and uh, inviting uh, Nijat to play pawn to a4 to, to kick away the knight. Uh, but Nijat just plays pawn to f6, as we've discussed. Uh, you can play definitely a4. Uh, he doesn't uh, want to wanna rush it. He says, all right, if you want to capture, you can capture. Uh, e captures on f6, knight captures, and now bishop to e3. Okay, now the knight is hanging. You definitely have to do something about it. Knight c to e4. So keeping material on the board. And the knight here is a, is a very impressive piece. Uh, it is uh, a mighty steed, if you will. We have knight b to d2 challenging this piece. Uh, and pawn to a4. Nijat just, just grabs more space on the queen side. Knight captures on e4. Uh, knight captures on e4. And now pawn to a3. Stopping pawn to a3 by Nijat. As that would um, uh, so somewhat ruin uh, the, the pawn structure on the queen side. Uh, this way it, it still remains very flexible. We have bishop to c5. Uh, offering a trade of dark square bishops. And bishop to d3. Uh, we have bishop captures. Rook captures. And now queen to f6. And if you look at this position. Uh, this is... Uh, Probably the best uh, position Nijat uh, could have hoped for with the black pieces against Gukesh. Not only is it a great position, he's also better on time. He has an hour and five minutes on the clock. Gukesh is something below uh, an hour here. And uh, here we have pawn to c3 by, by Gukesh. Uh, okay, uh, bishop to f5, continuing development, queen to e2. Uh, preparing to bring the other rook into the game. Uh, knight to d6, uh, and now bishop captures on f5, offering uh, offering a trade of bishops, a Gukesh trades, and now you should play queen captures on e5, but Nijat played knight captures on f5. And it uh, looks like knight captures on f5 is the move you want to play. I'm just going to show you why it's very much different, because if you play queen captures on f5, now you don't have, um, uh, the queen is not on f6, so you don't have this uh, uh, rook to e6 move that uh, was available in the other line. And now if you go rook to e6, and let's say rook a to e8, uh, rook to e1. Okay, but now you, you, <clears throat> you just trade everything, for example, rook captures, queen captures, queen captures, 
uh, and rook captures and that's pretty much it the knight will come to c4 go after the b2 pawn this would actually be very good for black uh, but instead knight captures on f5 was played and now uh, you'll see it's very much different now rook to e6 comes with tempo queen to f7 and now rook to e1 and uh, now nijet is no longer able to contest the rooks on the uh, on the e file uh, so pawn to h6 and now queen to c2 uh, preparing to uh, push that pawn to c4 uh, and uh, nijet of course would very much want to play something like c5 d4 and create a pass pawn on the d file so queen to d7 uh, the, the queen is very well placed here uh, plus also uh, it uh, pre prevents something like knight to e5 because then the rooks get disconnected so it's also important to um, go after this rook but yeah uh, most likely uh, it, it was played to, to meet c4 with d4 uh, which comes on the board c4 d4 we have pawn to c5 another very important move you don't want to allow uh, nijet to consolidate with pawn to c5 and also this leaves um uh, the weak uh, b7 pawn it's a backwards pawn uh, that can later on uh, be, be undermined maybe with something like queen to c4 maybe it comes with check maybe it doesn't maybe you go to b4 so many possibilities here uh, and now queen back to f7 by nijet now gukesh was very low on the on the clock here some 10 minutes on the clock nijet uh, almost half an hour and uh, the move you have to play here is d3 that's the move that uh, keeps the game going and now let's say queen to c4 you offer you threaten some very nasty discoveries here rook a to d8 you don't care there's no good discovery here that's the problem even if you play something like rook captures on h6 which looks really scary uh just queen d5 you offer a queen trade and you continue pushing your past d pawn uh, but okay queen to f7 was played now comes rook 6 to e4 going after the pawn uh, and queen to d5 we have rook to e5 attacking the queen and now queen back to f7 again d3 uh, was probably the way to go you have to give up a pawn and that's uh, pretty much it something like d3 if, if queens get trade off captures captures rook d2 goes after the pawn uh, you develop let's say rook captures knight comes to d4 and after let's say knight captures rook captures you get this position where white is up upon but uh, uh the two rooks on the board of course it's still playable uh here queen to f7 was played and now rook 5 to e4 we have queen to d5 and now rook to e5 attacking the queen queen to f7 and now rook 1 to e4 sorry uh, rook 1 to e4 not repeating the position again going after the uh, d4 pawn rook 8 to d8 defending and now rook to f4 putting pressure on the knight on f5 uh pawn to d3 attacking the queen queen captures on a4 uh, and now comes queen to a2 the problem is d3 here although it looks very scary the queen just comes to d1 and you don't have to worry about the promotion so after queen captures on a4 queen to a2 was played uh, so unpinning and offering the knight on f5 uh, but of course uh, should you capture the knight on f5 uh, then you can also just give a nice check but also you can uh, capture on f5 doesn't matter wh which happens first for example queen to b1 with check king to h2 and now d2 uh, the rook on f5 is hanging and uh, black is just um, much much better here you cannot uh, interpose with rook to d5 the pawn is covering that so uh, this would be uh well very close to winning for black so instead after queen a2 uh, we have king to h2 and now comes pawn to g6 just defending the knight uh queen to b4 uh, putting pressure on the b7 pawn uh and now uh, and also stopping this um, uh d2 push this was uh imperative to play queen to b4 without uh, having access to the d2 square uh just d2 d1 and that's it so this is very strong we have queen back to f7 by nijat also guarding the b7 pawn but this does put the queen in front of the white rook so what's the uh what's the problem here why not just pawn to g4 well pawn to g4 is the only winning move here but gukesh was down uh, on the clock he was below the the two minute mark and uh and Egypt, uh, has well over 10 minutes and uh, he he didn't play it he played rook back to e1 uh the reason why it's so strong uh, is that what do you do you can play d2 of course but then just knight captures on d2 and once let's say queen to c7 is played nicely aligning the queen with the rooks uh uh, uh sh should be very nice you just bring the knight back defend the rook on e5 you've taken care of the only problem you have on the board which is black's d2 pawn and uh that's uh, uh that's pretty much it uh sorry just a second
so that's uh, the idea here. So uh, rook to e1 by Gukesh, not finding this g4 move. We have rook f to e8, and now rook f to e4. Uh, rook captures on e4, rook captures on e4, and now rook to d5. Uh, putting pressure on the c5 pawn, and, uh, well, uh, he might also be interested in, in capturing. But all in all, you are looking for ways on how to execute this pawn to d2 move. Uh, knight to d2, we have knight to g7. This also gives uh, Nija time to remaneuver his knight to a proper square. King to g1 and knight to e6. And here comes rook to e3. Again, uh, you could go for something like a knight to b3 to try and defend your c5 pawn, but then just knight captures on c5. And you cannot take back because just d2 and you're going to lose this. So after knight e6, rook to e3 was played. And now knight captures on c5. We have queen to c4, nicely aligning the queen with everything here. Uh, and knight back to e6. Uh, again, there are other moves you could consider. You could consider g5, h5. You could consider pawn to b5 to attack the queen. But here, Nijet played knight to e6. And it looks like a blunder. Not maybe a blunder, but uh, surely a, a, a huge inaccuracy. As he leaves the d3 pawn undefended for, for what exactly? Uh, well, okay, time control has been reached. Both Gukesh and Nijet now have uh, plenty of time. And by plenty, I mean 16 minutes for Gukesh and 21 minutes for Nijat. And Rook captures on d3 is played. Uh, pawn to b5. Okay, attacking the queen. You can't really capture on c6 because the rook on d3 would hang. So queen to c3 defending and now knight to f4. Attacking the rook while defending the rook while really threatening knight to e2 check to win the, the, the white queen. This very nice fork would uh, end the game on the spot. So rook to e3, the only move Gukesh has left that keeps the game going in his favor. Uh, and now comes rook to g5. Uh, rook to g5 here is uh, very, very tricky as it goes after the g2 pawn, but the move you had to find here is uh, rook to d3. Uh, it's a silly looking move, but um, it's the only way to really continue the game here. Uh, as there's, uh, well, what do you do? Like queen to c2, you have to still defend everything. Rook captures on e3, f captures, now you're going to give a check, king moves, and well, you try playing this, maybe, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Uh, but that was the, the best that Nijat had. He played rook to g5, he threatened the g2 pawn, and now the position is uh, very much winning for Gukesh, and he just captures the pawn on c6. Uh, of course, uh, you can capture on g2 uh, with the rook, but the problem is if you capture on g2, then king to f1, and there's nothing more. White is just completely winning here. Once uh, the, the rook comes up the board, that's it. There's no continuation here. And the problem is you cannot move the knight to threaten the f2 pawn because if you move the knight, then the rook will hang. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the idea. Uh, but after this rook to g5 move, Gukesh doesn't play queen captures on c6. He just goes knight to e4. And he's again very low on the clock. He's down to three minutes um, uh, time. Uh, rook captures on g2 check, king to h1, and now knight to d5, attacking the rook and the queen. So look at this, knight to f6 with check. What is this now? Uh, the, the, this knight is forking the queen and the rook. The, the knight is forking the king and the knight. The, the rook on g2 is undefended. This is just uh, madness. And there's only one way out of it, and that is knight captures on f6. The, the point is that if you go king to f8, then the queen moves um, uh, out of harm's way with check. And once you move the king, let's say knight to e8 check, king to g8 you will capture the rook here. And once um, a knight captures on e3 comes with check, queen will capture and the knight on e8 is defended. You're up a piece, of course, completely winning. So after knight f6 check, knight captures on f6. We have king captures on g2 and now knight back to d5. Again, returning the, the, the fork. Uh, queen captures on c6 and knight captures on e3. We have f captures on e3 and queen to f5. And from all that uh, uh, madness, we now enter this queen and pawn endgame where Gukesh is just up a pawn. And while all queen endgames uh, are a draw, almost all, all queen endgames are also winning for the side that has the extra pawn. If you are able to improve your position as much as possible and then, you know, you just trade queens and you're up a pawn. So that should be winning. So, okay, let's see how he plays it. Pawn to b3. Of course, he wants to create a pass pawn and start pushing it. Pawn to h5. Uh, counter plays, of course, get the pawn to h4 and maybe try to do some damage there. Uh, pawn to a4, b captures, b captures, and queen to g5 check. If nothing else, at least you can give checks forever. Uh, king to f2, we have queen to f5 check. King g2, queen g5 check, king f2, queen f5 check. So a bit of a repetition there. 
uh, but Gukesh not interested in repeating, goes king e2, and now pawn to g5. Nijat also continues pushing, pawn to e4, queen captures on h3. Uh, so temporary uh, uh, pawn sacrifice, but you will, of course, win it back. Queen g6 check, king to h8, queen to h6 check, king back to g8, queen captures on g5 check, king to h8, uh, and now queen to h6 with check, king g8, queen g5 check, king to h8, and of course, pawn to a5. Uh, Gukesh still not interested in repeating, and this pawn is now uh, very, very uh, advanced. Uh, if you, let's say, get your king, uh, uh, well, you don't even have to move your king. Like, if you trade queens here, it's just winning for white, because the black king cannot stop the white pawn, and the white king can stop the black pawn. So the uh, queen trade is never an option for uh, for Nijat. Plus, he's also down a pawn. Pawn to h4. Uh, we have pawn a uh, queen to h6 with check. King to g8. Queen to g6 with check. King to h8. And now pawn to a6. Advancing the pawn uh, oh, 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 to a7 and a8. Queen to h2 check. King e3. Queen h3 check. King e2. Queen h2 check. King d3. Queen h3 check. King to c4. Queen to c8 check. King d5. Queen d8 check. Uh, queen to d6. Queen to a5 with check, king to e6, and now pawn to h3, king f7, uh, and queen to a2 with check. We have queen to e6, uh, and now queens get traded off. Queen captures, king captures, now pawn to h2, pawn to a7, h1 queen, and a1 queen. This is almost like the movie Searching for Bobby Fischer, almost, uh, but there's a pawn here, so there's no queen, <laughs> queen captures queen uh, at the end of the uh, variation. But yeah, if you haven't seen that uh, video, do check it out. I will put a link to it in the description below. It's a very nice um, uh, uh, ga uh, game from the movie. Uh, qu king to g7, queen to a7 with check, king to h6, and now queen to e3 with check. Uh, we have king to h5, king to h7, the only move that doesn't lose. We have king to h5, and here the position is winning, but Gukesh doesn't find it. He plays... Um, King to f5. Winning was actually queen to c5 check. And uh, as I know how much you guys love queen versus queen endgames, I will show why. Now, uh, the idea is, it doesn't really matter where the, uh, the black king goes. Let's say you go to h4, then comes queen to f2 check. Okay, you go to h5, queen to f5 check. Now you can't go up the board, or, or rather you can't go down the board because queen h7 check will win the black queen. And if you go king h6, then king f7. And now how do you uh, stop checkmate? Uh, queen to g2, only way to prolong it, you don't, can't really stop it. Queen f6 check, king h5, queen to h8 check. And now, of course, uh, the uh, thing we discussed, king to f3, queen captures, you will trade queens and advance your pawn to victory. So because you have an extra pawn, uh, it means that you just have to trade queens and the game is over. But queen, a king to f5 was played. Also looks very nice because you're threatening mate, but here comes queen to f1 check. Uh, queen to f4, uh, the, uh, the only proper way to, to win the game. Queen to b5 check, we have uh, queen to e5, and now queen to d7 with check. King to f6, opening up a discovery. King to h4, and now queen to g5 with check. And he was in this position on move 87 that Nijat Avasov resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the problem is... Uh, well, what do you do? King h3, then just queen to f5 with check. You force a queen trade, and that's it. King captures or pawn captures, doesn't really matter. Uh, and the pass pawn will win the game. So uh, an incredibly difficult game, I imagine, for both of them. Gukesh really burning his time. Uh, he came very, very close to that uh, clock hitting hitting zero. Uh, but yeah, he was able to... Uh, to you know to keep uh, afloat and uh, he missed a couple of winning opportunities but uh, with a game as complex as this one uh, you know it can happen to anyone uh, but yeah tough break for Nijat he was very close he had a great position but uh, you know Gukesh uh, played uh, an offbeat opening he played that D captures on E5 move instead of knight captures on E5 that we discussed that almost never is played and he was able to get, uh, well, just a position where you have nothing, but you can play it. Uh, sort of like a, like a Magnus approach. Uh, and yeah, uh, very nicely done by Gukesh. And I'm also going to mention, as there's a quote above the board by Hikaru, uh, this is the, the position from his game. We're just going to check out the, the final position. So here, uh, Alireza had white and Hikaru had black. Alireza uh, was up uh, up the exchange, but Hikaru, as you can see, has four pawns to, to his one pawn. And this is how the game continued. Uh, G3, uh, G4 was played and Alireza played uh, uh, king captures on D3. And king captures on D3 is losing, but, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, 
uh, well, it's heartbreaking for Alireza, but also uh, also great for Hikaru that he was able to put constant pressure, constant pressure, constant pressure, uh, and then, uh, well, force Alireza to basically make this blunder with uh, one, one second on the clock. And it doesn't appear that it should be losing because, okay, you capture a pawn and you don't care about the G pawn because you're going to put a rook on G8, and how is the pawn ever crossing the G2 square? That's the, the real question here. Uh, well, the, the point is, look at this, g3, rook to f8 with check, we have king to e6, and he was in this position on move 63 that Alireza Firuja resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, problem is, uh, uh, even if you go for rook to g8, uh, there's this g2 move, the move that we've discussed that cannot be crossed, but due to the uh, position of the white king on d3, and the king is there as the king captured a pawn on d3, uh, it doesn't matter, you will just capture that pawn, and now comes knight to the f4 check, king wherever, and knight captures on g2, and now, of course, the position is completely winning for Hikaru. So, tough break for Alireza, but, uh, yeah, uh, good, good job Hikaru, he gets his first win of the FIDE Candidates tournament, and, uh, well, also could be, could be very relevant, you know, when Hikaru wins the first game, he could also win uh, five in a row, same as Magnus, and here are the standings after five rounds have been played, so Nepo and Gukesh are now tied for the lead, 3 points Fabiano Caruana, 2.5 points Hikaru and Prague, 2 points Vidit, uh, and 1.5 points Nijat Abasov and Alireza Firuja. So, uh, we would have drawn this game, Alireza would still be hovering, you know, somewhere in the middle of the board. Uh, but, uh, yeah, with this, uh, uh, with this loss, uh, he is sharing last place with Nijat. Uh, so yeah, uh, next uh, next big game uh, in round six, Gukesh is facing Hikaru. So we'll see what what he can do there. It should be should be a very interesting um, matchup. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, sorry I haven't covered it right away, but uh, I was actually quite busy yesterday. We were in the hospital and uh, my wife gave birth to our son, uh, so I became a father again. And yeah, it's a very, very healthy uh, boy. Uh, we named him Tal. Uh, it wasn't really even my suggestion. Uh, so, you know, it's nice when, when things work out. Uh, but yeah, just uh, wanted to share some joyous news with you. And also one of the reasons why I haven't uh, uh, covered the game in time. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy uh, birthday to Paul. And I would like to thank David Gasparian, William Smith, Paul Hinamund, and Thomas Zighetti for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching. And I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but mostly covering the FIDE Candidates Tournament. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.